Lucien Carr was not a poet. He never had the chance because he murdered a man, David Kramer, when he was 19. But without him, there would be no beat generation. He first met Allen Ginsberg at Columbia University, where he attended classes. Carr was at the center of the original group of beat writers. The beat writers were Jack Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg, and William Burroughs, and affectionately called Lucy and Lou. Allen Ginsberg, author of How, said this about Lou. Know these words and you speak car language. Fruit, phallus, clitoris, cacoles, feces, fetus, womb, rimbod. And that Lou was the glue that held the group together. Carr was described by his fellow students as stunningly brilliant, a talented and dissolute, a prank-loving late-night reveler who haunted the dark pockets of Chelsea and Greenwich Village until dawn without making a dent in his brilliant performance in the classroom. The largest contribution Carr made to the Beat Generation was the formulation of an idea he called the New Vision. New Vision was a pseudo-philosophical kind of an idea that had these three tenets to it. Number one, naked self-expression is the seed of creativity. We can see this in the jazz style of beat writing. Number two, the artist's consciousness is expanded by the derangement of the senses. And what deranges your senses better than drugs? That explains the alcoholism that many of the beat writers were prone to, such as Jack Kerouac. Number three, art eludes conventional morality. Naked Lunch by William Burroughs documents his extreme depravity, both sexually and morally and is regarded now as a literary classic. Carr introduced the beats to Rimbaud, the poet who wrote The Drunken Boat. Rimbaud's style of poetry would later become a huge influence on Ginsberg's Howl. Later in Carr's life, he would say this about the time with the beats. It was a rebellious group that was really dedicated to a new vision. It was trying to look at the world in a new light, trying to find a way that gave it some meaning, trying to find values that were valid. And it was through literature all this was supposed to be done. Lou, unfortunately, was never able to achieve literary success himself. The reason? Because of the murder of David Kramer. He was an English and physical education teacher at Washington University in St. Louis and a childhood friend of Burroughs. Burroughs said of Kramer that he was always very funny, the veritable life of the party, and completely without any middle-class morality. Kramer met Carr in a Boy Scout troop and quickly became infatuated with the young boy. He followed Lou from school to school, from Phillips Academy in Massachusetts to Bowdoin College in Maine and to the University of Chicago, and finally to Columbia University. On August 13, 1944, Carr and Kerouac attempted and failed to ship out of New York to France on a merchant ship. After that failed attempt, Carr and Kerouac went to go drink. Kerouac left first and ran into Kramer, who asked where Carr was. Kerouac told him. Kramer caught up with Carr at the West End, and the two men went for a walk, ending up in Riverside Park on Manhattan's Upper West Side. According to Carr's version of the night, Kramer made yet another sexual advance that turned violent. Kramer assaulted Carr physically, and being larger, gained the upper hand. In desperation and panic, Lou Carr stabbed the older man, using a Boy Scout knife from his St. Louis childhood, tied his hands and feet together, weighted his body, and dumped it in the Hudson River. After a few days, Carr turned himself in, pled guilty to first-degree manslaughter, and served two years in the Elmira Correctional Facility in upstate New York. After his release, Carr spent the next 47 years of his life, his entire professional career, as a general news desk manager until his retirement in 1993. Carr died in Washington, D.C., January 2005, after a long battle with bone cancer.